Hey guys, in this tutorial I show you some tips about UV unwrapping a hard surface model with Blender so that you can texture it easily with Substance Painter. In the previous part I showed the lazy way for UV unwrapping. I select all in edit mode and then I press U and choose Smart UV Project. But this time we will do a manual UV unwrapping. The first thing that I do for this hard surface model is to go to Select and select the sharp edges. So what are sharp edges? Well, these are edges that have a certain angle to the adjacent faces. And for this angle I selected 60. You can play around for this, but it worked for me. But the most important thing is that these parts here, that don't have natural edges and that are not hidden in any way, that these parts don't contain any visible seams. I also select these edges here in the inside of the cylinders, so that we kind of break up these structures, this could also lead to some issues when you don't add any seams there. And now with these edges selected, I go ahead and mark them as seams. Right click and select Mark Seam. But before I select it, I add the Mark Seam and Clear Seam to the Quick Favorites menu so that I can easily reuse it. Okay, now I have both in my Quick Favorites, I can press the Q key and select Mark Seam. Okay, as you can see, all these edges are red now, which means they are defined as seams for UV unwrapping. Now I select all, press U and choose Unwrap. So let's have a look at the UV map. I open a new window with the UV editor. You can define the margin here, you can bring them closer together if you like, but the margin is alright in my opinion. Now many of you will say that the islands are not connected for the most parts, but more important in my opinion is that the seams are located at the natural edges of the model and are not really visible. What's also important is the way we are texturing this. We will use Substance Painter and for this model I know that we are not going to paint onto the UV islands, we will drag materials, most of the time, onto the mesh. You can see here the UV islands are not stretched. I activated the stretching, the display of the stretching in the overlay and most of them are blue. That's okay, but I want these two parts, the silver parts, to be connected. I want them to have connected UV islands and I will explain the reason for this when we switch to Substance Painter to texture it. What I do now is I connect these UV islands by removing the seams for these faces. Then I press A again to select all then the U key and select Unwrap. And now you can see these two islands, I hover over them with the mouse cursor and then I press L to select them. And these are the parts with the light steel material. Alright, this was the unwrapping process and now I export the mesh as we did before as FBX. I select it in object mode, then I choose File, Export, FBX. I want to export the selected objects, just the mesh. We don't need to bake the animation and be sure to apply the modifiers. And that's it, we can export the object. Okay, now let's open Substance Painter and I will show you how to add textures for this by just using one material. Okay, here we go. We can already select the smart materials so that they are loaded in the background and then I create a new project. For this we select the FBX that we exported. The other settings I keep as they are like in the previous part, but now I check this checkbox, which is called create a texture set per UDIM tile. Well, we don't have a UDIM tile and we are not interested in it, but I checked this to avoid that for each material that we have in Blender, a texture set is created in Substance Painter. I kind of misused this, but it works. We have one texture set that is created. It is called 1001. We can rename it. I name it Steel. And with this feature we can keep our materials assigned in Blender, but still in Substance Painter. We're going to create just one texture set, which means we will end up with one material that we can use in the engine, in the game engine later on. This is much better for performance and easier to handle. Okay, now I'm going to bake the mesh maps. We don't need an ID map. The output size again are set to 2K. 
And as you can see, we are baking the mesh maps for one material only, which is called steel. Alright, now the big question is, how can we add, for example, different smart materials to just one texture set? We will see this now in an example. Let me drag a material onto the mesh, for example, this steel tank material. Okay, this looks nice. The rendering is really good. This means our UV unwrapping is fine. And before I continue, I define some shadows and post-processing effects like I did in the previous part. Okay, looks nice. Now I go ahead and drag a different smart material onto the mesh as well as a texture for the part in the middle. By doing this, I hide the material below because this material is added now to the top of the layer stack. The next thing I do is to add a black mask for this new material. Select the mask in the layer stack and then activate the tool Polygon Fill. And now you will see why I kept the UV islands for the parts in the middle together. Because with this tool I can paint white onto the mask for the UV islands. And now I just click these parts and the material below the mask will appear for these areas. And this is like magic, I can also click these parts to make the material below the mask visible. Well, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked the result. Now you could export the textures and for instance use it in your game engine. So guys, if you liked the tutorial, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned, follow me on my social media, on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Support me on my Patreon, this would be great. If you have any questions, add these to the comments and I see you in the next one on JNM.